trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in us now to the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now to the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now to the hour of our death. Amen. O glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was the beginning, is now, and ever, shall be world without end. Amen. O oh, our good Jesus, forgive, forgive us, us our sins. Save, save us from the fire of hell. hell. Lead our souls to heaven, heaven especially those who are most needed of your mercy. mercy. Jesus, have mercy on us. Mother, may we help us. May the souls of all the people departed. Through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Lead Amen. Lead our souls rest in peace. Amen. The five glorious mystery. We will be looking at the first, the resurrection. The second, the ascension. The third, the descent of the Holy Spirit on the apostles. The fourth, the assumption of our Blessed Mother Mary to heaven. And the fifth, the coronation of our Blessed Mother into heaven. The coronation of our Mother, Queen of Heaven and Nigeria over all the world. All intentions will be granted through her to Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from all evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And bless the fruit of your own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in us now to the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among.
us life, death, and resurrection, as purchased for us the reward of eternal salvation, grant to beseech thee the meditation upon these mysteries in the most holy rose of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Most sacred of Jesus. Have mercy on us. Most sacred of Jesus. Have mercy on us. Most sacred of Jesus. Have mercy on us. Immaculate of Mary. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Oh, you have not seen so God in heaven. Pray for us. In the name of the Father. In the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
adoration and praise we've come to you Lord not of our own accord yes. we've come to you because it is only through you the one master the one Messiah the only one that matters when all things changes the only one that understands us at our worst the one that seeks us out of darkness and pours out his wonderful light so in adoration and praise let us remain standing and continue to worship God thanking him for what he has done in the previous seminars and what he's about to do today let us begin to pour our hearts open let us tell the Holy Spirit I am here again and of your own accord I will follow where you lead I want to follow you I want to know you better what I received last seminar was interesting was in, in fact fantastic but today I know it will be awesome it will be great so let us open our hearts let us tell the Lord I have come that I may receive you into my life more than I have imagined I have come prepared whatever is going to be a distraction I lay them aside I want you to take me fill me lift me up and allow your Holy Spirit to take me through the journey
we we'll invite our speakers to our go to come and take seminar three. I don't, I'm sure none of you will miss this seminar. At the end of the day, you will have something to take home with. Praise God. Praise Master Jesus. Amen. Uh -uh. Is this for Jesus? Praise Master Jesus. Amen. More like it. So you're welcome in Jesus' name. Amen. Today is seminar three. Um, for those physical, welcome the person by your side. Ask the person their names. We should actually know each other. Ask their sister, brother, what's your name? You're welcome in Jesus' name. Those online, you're not alone. You're with the Holy Spirit. So you welcome the Holy Spirit. And ask him to open up your heart that today you'll be blessed. That today the words you will hear will bear fruit in your, in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So today is seminar three, which is Jesus is the Lord of your life. So basically in this seminar, what we are trying to do is to relearn our, the basic truths about Christianity. The basic truth we already know. Most of the messages we've taken, seminar one and two, is something we know already. But the difference is that this seminar, we want to experience it. So when you are told, God the Father loves you personally, you can say, yes, I know that he loves me. There's nothing you can tell me because I've experienced the love of the Father. That is what is going to make it different. And it's not be becoming a head knowledge. And it becomes an experience that you know that you know. So no matter what life throws at you, you can tell yourself and remind yourself that God the Father loves me personally. Then seminar two. Jesus saves you and sets you free. Another truth. So when the devil is bringing all those things, telling you you cannot do well, this will not go, um, this bondage, this family thing, this, that, you will look the devil in the eye because you have experienced the, save, the saving grace of Jesus. And you tell the devil that, God, that Jesus has saved me and set me free. So that is the basis of this seminar. That whatever seminar we have gone through, in as much as you have heard about it before, but you experience it and know it firsthand. And that is what is going to make it real. And today we are talking about Jesus as Lord. So we are going to settle that one again, that Jesus is the Lord. My prayer is that for each seminar, we are going to experience it and begin to live it out in Jesus' name. Amen. I did not hear amen. We don't want, okay, amen. So today, Jesus is Lord. Before we proceed, let's establish something. Let's establish a fact. Jesus is the Lord, whether me and you believe it or not. He is Lord. And this seminar is very apt because our anchor passage was actually today's reading. Who can get it? Today's reading. There was a reading declaring the Lordship of Jesus Christ today. Who knows um, which uh, first reading, second reading, third reading, which one? Who knows that? Let me see those that participated, participated, participated well at Mass. Unfortunately, I can't see those online, so I don't know if anybody's getting it online. Okay, so because of time, I'll move forward. Is a uh, second reading, the book of Philippians. It was taken from Philippians 2, 6 to 11. But we're going to concentrate on 9 to 10. I read in Jesus' name. That's Philippians 2, 9 to 10. It says, So that all being in heaven and on earth and in the underworld shall bend their knees at the name of Jesus, that every tongue shall proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord to the glory of God the Father. So Jesus Christ is already Lord, whether me or you believe it or not. If you also go to the book of Ephesians, Ephesians 1, from 21 to 23. Ephesians 1, 21 to 23. He was also saying there that when Jesus was raised from the dead, he was seated at the right hand of the Father. And from there, he rules above all heavenly rulers, authorities, powers, and lords. So he is the Lord of lords. He has a title superior to all other titles in the world and in the nest. God put all things under Christ's feet and gave him to the church as supreme Lord over all. Praise God. So the Lordship of Jesus Christ is not questioned. So but the question now is, I'm sure we know this song. He is Lord. He is Lord. Amen. 
He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. Amen, amen. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. With this established fact, you agree that it is best that Jesus is the Lord of your life. But the question is, is Jesus the Lord of your life? Because you can know that Jesus is the Lord of your life. You can invite Jesus into your life. You can be coming to church, but yet Jesus is not the Lord of your life. So let us understand what a Lord is. Who are those we call Lord? It's a title that refers to rulers of various kinds, heavenly or earthly. God is the Lord, the kings, husbands. Even the Bible said you can call your husband Lord. Governors, prince, prophets, fathers. And that, another definition said, a person or deity who has authority, control or power over, over others, acting as a master or a ruler. So that's who a Lord is. Now, let us bring it down. Is Jesus the Lord of your life? What it means for Jesus to be the Lord of your life is that he's in control. That he's ruling your life. That he's directing your life. Somebody might say, yes, I know Jesus. I come to church. I pray. Now, I want to ask a question. If you're in a car, there is, there is a driver, there is a passenger. Who is in control? I want someone to answer. Who is in control? The driver, right? So Jesus is telling you, unless I'm the driver... Unless I'm the one leading that life, I'm not the Lord of your life. You can call me Lord. Even the Bible said, it's not everybody that calls me Lord, Lord, that knows me that will enter the kingdom of heaven. So it's not about the knowledge. That is why we say that this seminar, I want to experience it. That's what you are saying. You're experiencing it in your life. So the first step is that Jesus is not the Lord of your life until you allow him to be the Lord of your life. Until you hand over the steering of your life, until you hand over the keys of the vehicle of your, of your life and say, Lord, take control. And you know the beautiful thing? Jesus is all-knowing. Jesus is all-seeing. He knows everything. So he knows how to actually take you through life. He knows the potholes. He knows the bends. He knows the navigations. He knows everything. So he's the best person to actually lead us. But most times we find it very difficult to allow God to lead us. Most times you think God is slow. You think he doesn't really understand. God, this particular one. I can remember there was something that was dragging with God. I was telling God, I said, God, there, you don't understand. This particular one, it has to be the way I'm telling you so that I'm able to do it though. I said, it's something you want me to do. So for me to be able to do it, it has to be the way I want it. I said, no, I know what I'm saying. Do you, I remember where he told me that thing. I was crossing this road. I, I can't remember the year. It was during Kerigma. And he said to me, he said, so is this your small head? You think you know what is best for you. And he said to me, you don't even know how limited you are. You are so limited that to cross this road in the next two minutes, you don't even know what will happen. But I know what will happen. Praise God. And he said, I see in full, but you see in parts. That is why you should trust me. Praise God. So when you allow Jesus to lead you, he sees in full. I can remember a friend was telling me that uh, she was coming from Ologolo, and her spirit was telling her to go inside and don't follow the major road. She looked and she said, ah, that the road is free now, let her just go. She said immediately she was getting to Ikate, see traffic. And she was, watching, she was rushing to church for a meeting. The traffic, she's not said praying and asking Holy Spirit, please forgive me, I should have listened. So we are so limited that if you look, you cannot see. But the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings is telling you, allow me, hand over the keys to me and I will lead you. And the beautiful thing about God is that he's not forceful. He will not force you. He will be gentle. He said he's the good shepherd. You, can, you will see that in um, the book of John 10. The book of John 10, 6 to 11. He said he's the good shepherd. The funny thing is that that thing that you want to go and do, he said, he said he's a good shepherd, that the hired man, when the wolf comes, they will run away and leave you. 
So if you, that thing you want to go and do, if you do it and make mistake, that thing that led you to go and do it will leave you. But Jesus is saying, because you are my own, I don't want you to make mistake. Please give me this tearing. Give me this tearing and I will lead you. Even if you walk to the shadow, uh, uh, valley of shadow of death, I am there with you. Even if you are going through challenges, I am there with you because I know I'm the Lord over all things. I know how to bring you out. I know what to do. Praise God. So tell your neighbor, give those keys to the Lord. Give those keys to the Lord. Allow him. He knows where to lead you. And because he's a gentle spirit, so today he's telling you, I stand at the door of your heart and I'm knocking. He said, open up your door. He said, give me those keys. When you give me those keys, I will drive you and I'll drive you safely. I pray that we will do that in Jesus' name. So the next one is, hear what I've said now. You will say, okay, it's okay now. I, can, I, will make Jesus, I will make Jesus a lot of my life. But if you look into your life, there are other lots, there are things that have been controlling you since. So those things will not just bow down immediately to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. They're, they're going to rebel. Definitely they're going to rebel. So when you begin to hand over your life to Christ and these challenges are coming, don't see it as uh, something, ah, I bet go, this needs too much and go back. No, that is what is expected. Now, how do we make the, Jesus the Lord of our lives? There's a diagram, please. This is where Jesus wants to be, how he wants to be the Lord of your life. I don't know if you can see it. These two life, please, um, if you can help me show it to those online as well. Please, can you see? Maybe we should come forward. So these two lives is a natural life, like the human life, you know? So if you see, the cross is Jesus. So you can think it is easy for you to give the lordship of your life. Can I drag? No, no, I can't do. But I can't. Okay, so, okay, don't worry. I can use my diagram here. So, the first two is a natural human being. So you see, like I was saying, you would think it is easy for you to give, up, to give the lordship of your life to Jesus Christ. But if you look at it already, you will see that things have occupied. If you look at your life, you will see your children can be the Lord, music, sports, sex, your business, food. Some put food. When it comes to food, they start telling Jesus, you know what, just leave this thing, you know. And now, this life, Jesus is outside. Have you seen that Jesus is outside? This person can be coming to church or this person can be praying. It is knowledge that gives power. This person does not know that Jesus is outside. And if you look at the center, yourself is in control. So if you look at the second one, that one tried. At least he invited Jesus to come in. Jesus is inside the circle. But you know, you, 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 both of us are comfortable that Jesus is there. So that when you need him. You know, when there is trouble, you can call on him and he will come. But unfortunately, Jesus is not your servant. He is the Lord. So the third one is where we are aiming to go to. The third one is where Jesus is the center. So he controls what you do. The music you listen to. He controls how you take care of your children. Your job is the center. Yourself is the center. Uh, when it comes to sexual immorality, when it comes to sports, money. So he becomes the Lord. He becomes the one that you go to and he directs you how to live your life. This is the only way that he's the Lord. And the thing is that if Jesus is not the Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. So you can say, uh, number one, at least I'm coming to church now. He's there. Uh, when I need him, I will still go to him. When I've tried all every option and it does not work, I will still go to him. Jesus will be looking at you. You know, he's a gentle spirit. He will not struggle. He'll be looking at you. You make all the mistakes, do whatever, until you now come back to him. But the last part is where we are headed to, where Jesus is actually the center and is the Lord of our lives. Praise God. Thank you so much, brother. So if you look at this, like I've said, it is not easy for us to do that. I want us to read Romans 7, 18 to 19. Romans 7, 18 to 25, I will read. This actually describes us because there are some people who really, you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, you really want to, but you find that you're not able to do that. Let us see what Romans said. In Romans 7, 18 to 25, I read in Jesus' name. I know that good does not live in me, that is, in my human nature. So it is not, you are limited as a human being. So if you live yourself, there's no way you can live above sin because you are limited. 
For even though the desire to do good is in me, I'm not able to do it. I don't do the good I want to do. Instead, I do the evil that I do not want to do. If I do what I don't want to do, this means I'm no longer the one who does it. Instead, it is the sin that lives in me. So I find that this law is at work. When I want to do what is good, what is evil is the choice I have. My inner being delights in the law of God, but I see a different law at work in my body, a law that fights against the law which my mind approves of. It makes me a prisoner of the law of sin, which is at work in my body. What an unhappy man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is taking me to death? Thanks be to God who does this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. So Jesus Christ, that death on the cross, gave us an access to begin to live another kind of life. It is with that kind of life that you're able to submit. If it's with your natural life, you cannot submit. Because what you keep getting is you want to do it, but it is not possible for you to do it. So until you make Jesus the Lord, it is the Lord, it is Jesus Christ that will help you, give you his spirit, so you're able to live that new life. It is that new life that you live in the power of the Holy Spirit that is going to help you to live this life. Praise God. So by yourself, by yourself, you cannot do anything. So if you leave it at the level of yourself, you keep struggling. Romans 8, Romans 7, 18 to 25 is going to be your story. You will keep saying, hey, I want to, but I don't know why I'm not doing it. You are not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You have not accepted what Jesus has done and begin to live that new life. Praise God. I pray that at the end of this seminar, we'll be living that new life so that we're walking in dominion like God has destined for us in Jesus' name. So now, what do I do? What do I do? Let's go to Romans 6. Romans 6, 10 to 11. Romans 6. I'll be reading because of time. And I have a simpler uh, um, version of the Bible. I'm reading from the good news. So in that way, everybody can understand. So Romans 6. I'll start from 10. Romans 6, 10 to 13. Are we there? And so, because he died, sin has, sin has no power over him. And now he lives his life in fellowship with God. So Jesus lives, lives, now lives his life in fellowship with God. Now let's see the other verse. In the same way, you are to think of yourself as dead. You are to think of yourself as dead. So you must put to death your flesh and your desire. You have to remove yourself because the passage we read before made us to understand that by yourself, you cannot do this. Praise God. So he says, in the same way, you are to think of yourself as dead so far as sin is concerned, but living in fellowship with God through Christ Jesus. Praise God. So this is the secret. Living in fellowship with God. So you have to stay with God. Outside God, you can do nothing. The Bible says, cut out from me, you can do nothing. There's nothing you can do. So you have to consciously live your life in fellowship with God. How do you do that? The next verse. Let's look at 12. It says, Sin must no longer rule in your mortal bodies so that you obey the desires of your natural self. Nor must you surrender any part of yourself to sin to be used for wicked purposes. Instead, give yourself to God as those who have been brought out from death to life. Praise God. So you give yourself to God. You surrender yourself to God. I'm sure you'll be like, this surrender, what will happen? If you surrender. But first of all, surrender. You begin to see what will happen. Let me finish that verse. You surrender your whole life to him. To be used for righteous purposes. Praise God. So the secret is to stay with Christ. Stay connected. Stay with him. Live your life in fellowship with Christ. Now, what will begin to happen? Let us go to Romans 12. Let's go to Romans 12. I'll take verse 1 to 2. Romans 12, 1 to 2. It says, So then, my brothers and sisters, because of God's great mercy to us, I appeal to you, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to his service 
and pleasing to him. This is the true worship that you should offer. So offer yourself to God. That's surrender. Surrender yourself to God. Now, verse 2, he says, Do not conform yourself to the standard of this world, but let God transform you inwardly by a complete change of your mind. So if you begin to surrender yourself to God, he begins to work on your mind. Because if you do not change the way you think, you cannot change the way you act. If you, keep, if, you, if you keep feeling, I can do it by myself, I can do it by myself, you cannot do it by yourself. Until you know that there's a new life that you have been called into. Until I walk into that new life and begin to live that new life, I cannot overcome this sin. I cannot overcome these vices. I cannot overcome these lords and make Jesus Christ the Lord. So if you don't walk in that new life, there is no possible by yourself that you can do that. So as you surrender yourself to God, he begins to renew your mind. He begins to renew you inwardly. You begin to think differently. You begin to see things differently. You begin to read the Bible and the Bible begins to make meaning to you. What you used to do before and did not do it. Something changed. You are now focusing on God and surrendering your life to God. So he says, then you'll be able to know the will of God. What is good? what is pleasing to him and what is perfect. Praise God. And that is why I want to beg everybody. You see your quiet time. Take it seriously. That is the best gift you are going to give yourself. In fact, I was discussing with somebody yesterday and I said, I think that's the best habit to form. Sitting at the feet of Jesus. That is the secret. For everybody you see who has been consistent with Christianity, they sit at the feet of Christ. That intimacy is not lacking. Once you stay away from intimacy, the devil will come. It's not your flesh. He knows he's the father of all liars. He knows that flesh is his area. You cannot win him there. You can't win him there. The only way you can win him is to begin to walk in fellowship with Christ. Then you're on a higher ground and he cannot reach you. Praise God. So quiet time has been introduced now. Please, with everything in you, ask God that this should be my lifestyle, that this should be my habit. Because if you look at... Um, when Jesus, Mary and Martha, Jesus told Mary, Martha, you worry over things that Mary had chosen the better part. What was Mary doing? Mary was at the feet of Jesus Christ. Do you know what I was thinking? Eh? It was the same Mary that Paul that anointed him today. I'm sure it was from their discussion. I'm sure he, because how would he have known, how would she have known that Jesus needed to do, Jesus needed that kind of purification before her, his death. I'm sure it was because she was constantly staying at his feet. Then, she now has a clue of what God wants. Has a clue of the will of God. What he desires. That's what the Bible tells us. That as he begins to transform you, you will now know what is good, what is pleasing, and what is perfect to him. It's just a thought that came to me. You know, I'm like, ah, this is Mary. How did you know? And I, it just connected that it could be because he's always at the feet of Jesus. So from their discussion, he knows that Jesus needed this kind of thing. And he went, she went ahead and did it. And she did it without looking at anybody because she knows that this is the heart of the master. Praise God. So as you begin to surrender your life to God, he begins to transform you. And that is the way that you begin to live this new life and that you can make Jesus the Lord of your life. If not, your desire will be in vain because you need God, you need the Holy Spirit to be able to enthrone Jesus as Lord of your life. Praise Master Jesus. Now the second one, the third one, when you make Jesus a lot of your life, you will find true peace and freedom, definitely. But in life, there are challenges. It doesn't take away the challenges that will come. And sometimes I begin to wonder, how did we miss it? How did we now start pursuing um, costless Christianity? I don't know how we missed it. I don't know why every challenge you are binding, you are casting. Yeah, of course, we should. But it's not every challenge that you bind and cast. There are some things you go through so that God can form you. Praise God. So even Jesus Christ told us in John 16, 33, before he left, he told his disciples, I have told you this so that you will have peace in me. In this world, you will suffer. In this world, there will be tribulations. That's, sometimes that's what they don't tell people. And they come into Christianity and they see like their problems are magnified. They say, what is this? Please let me go back. I have a friend that she was telling me that, ah, she can't be doing midnight prayers again. <laughs> I said, well, because I think she's in the prophetic. So she said she can't be doing midnight prayers again. She said, after midnight prayers, if you see attack, if you see challenges, she said, no, 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 please, well, I cannot. And I was telling her, I said, sister, come and join intercessory ministry. Come and join healing ministry. Come and stay with like minds. I said, so that I can develop what you have. For, for, 
for them to be attacking you, that means you are shaking their kingdom. There's something you are doing with that midnight prayer. And the last time I talked to her, I don't think she was doing it. Praise God. May that not be a portion in Jesus' name. And most times you see people do this because they think that once you come to Christ, every challenge will go. No. That's error. Even Jesus said it. He even he prayed for Peter. He told Peter in Luke 22, 31 to 33, he said that devil has received permission to save you. You know how I have received wit. He said, but I have prayed for you so that your faith will not fail. He did not say, I will remove that, uh, I will not give devil permission to do what he wants to do. No. He said, I will pray for you so that your faith will not fail. So, as you have given your life to Christ, those challenges will still be there. But the only difference is the way you handle them. The way you carry them now. The, the way he now changes your mind and you begin to see the good things that can come out from those challenges. Because the Bible said that everything works unto good for those who love God and are called for his, um, for his uh, good works. So, everything works unto good. Even in that challenge, Sometimes I tell people, not all good is God. Though. There are some good that will come. It's the devil that brought it. If you're not discerning, if you're not sitting at the foot of Jesus Christ, you enter that thing thinking, oh, it is good. And not all bad is evil. You can also see that in um, when Jesus was about to die, he was already predestined. This is the way we are going, they are going to be saved. When Jesus, was, when Jesus was about to die, and... Uh, when they came to him, it was also the reading today. In fact, Life in the Spirit Seminar, I think this is the best time to actually do Life in the Spirit Seminar because we can relate. It was in the reading today. When they came to arrest Jesus Christ, the apostles brought, one of the apostles brought out a knife and cut the ear. Do you know what he told the apostle? He said, leave, leave them. This is the hour of darkness to reign. So this must happen so that you can have victory. This must happen so that I can save you and reconcile you back to the Father. I have to die, praise God. So, we need to know that there are some challenges that are from God. Even if that challenge is not from God. In fact, I, I think it's somewhere in Isaiah. He said, I will make you go through hard times. And I will be there with you. And when you are trying to go to the left or to the right, you will hear my voice telling you this is the right way to go. Praise God. He said, I will cause that hard time. Because in that hard time, he trains you. You know, we have our will. Your will is yours. One of the stations of the Ascent Stations 9 says... That no force on earth, nothing can change my will. My will is mine. With these challenges, God needs to train your will so that your faith will not fail. He needs to train your will. He needs, to, he needs you to grow into trust. These are the things he will, use to, he will use to train you because you have your will. He didn't take your will away from you. You have a right to make a choice. So he needs to train you so that you can choose him. He needs to train you to walk on that right path. So those challenges, when you don't face them, when you cast them, when you complain and complain and complain, you take away the good thing that God wants to do. So I want you to take away something from here. Everything works unto good for those who love God. Even if it's from the devil, if you stay with God, he said, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. I've overcome. So I will tell you how to overcome. Praise God. I will tell you, stay with me. I will, I will tell you how to overcome. I will tell you how to defeat this enemy because I have overcome the world. Praise Master Jesus. So let us look at uh, Romans 5. Romans 5, from 1 to 5. It says, Romans 5, 1 to 5. Now that you have been pushed right with God through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. He has brought us by faith into this experience of God's grace in which we now live. And we can boast of the hope we have in sharing God's glory. We also boast about our troubles because we know. So in following Christ, there is a win-win. Both good though, both bad though, we boast about it because God is involved. Because if he's involved there, everything will work, on to, will work on to good. Let's continue. He says, we also boast of our troubles because we know that troubles produces endurance. It trains your will. You have the stamina to stand whatever the devil comes your way. It brings endurance. Endurance brings about God's approval. Who wants God to, be approve, to approve him or her? You see? So you need to build your endurance. You need to build up your faith. It is when you build that endurance that it brings about God's approval. And his approval creates hope. So you are hopeful. There's nothing like depression in your life. 
Now, until like you're going into mental health, mental health, all these mental health things. You know, you're not going into it because you are, you are hopeful. You know the person who has called you because even in the grave, Jesus is Lord. Even in the grave, Jesus is Lord. Even in the grave, Jesus is Lord. So no matter the situation, you are hopeful because you know he who has called you is faithful and he's strong enough to bring you out. Praise God. So he now says, this hope does not disappoint us. For God has poured out his love into our hearts by the means of the Holy Spirit, who is God's gift to us. So in the midst of all these things, God pours his love into your heart. Did you know that some prayer points that you spend hours praying? And God is saying, go through this. Don't worry. Go through this. It will come naturally. Go through this. I will build your stamina. Go through this, I'll approve of you. And if I approve of you, I'll pour out my Holy Spirit, I'll pour out my love on you. And you are praying, and you are fasting, and you are binding. May God give us the same in Jesus' name. So that we're able to know which one to bind and which one to go through. Because there are some things that we will go through. So that it can produce that endurance, God's approval, and the love of God. Praise God. Now, finally, the aim of this seminar is actually to prepare us for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That's the aim of this seminar. And until you settle these truths, the love of God, Jesus being your Savior, and Jesus being your Lord, you might not be able to receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. So it is very important. So throughout this week, what are we trying to do? To be able to look into our lives and take away those things that will be a hindering block from you actually receiving the Holy Spirit. So to help us to prepare, we are going to do two things during the course of this seminar. First is the personal contact. There's something we call the personal contact. It can also be called counseling. What happens there? You're going to have a discussion with your facilitators and they help you to look into your life because this, this period, we are trying to remove every interior block, whatever that will prevent you from actually receiving the fruit of this seminar of the Holy Spirit not coming in full measure upon your life. So that discussion, you're going to have that discussion, you go into your past life, you look at things that could be a block from receiving the Holy Spirit. That's the first one, personal contact. That personal contact, we're going to have it, you know, because of uh, the Lenten period, nothing is happening next week. Next Saturday is Holy Saturday, then Easter Sunday. So the upper Saturday, which is the 6th of April, is the time of this personal contact. And this personal contact, everybody has to be in church. We have a long time to plan it. It's also a, okay, I'll go to the second one. We have to be in church so that you can meet with the facilitators. We're also going to get proper counselors from other communities to come and help us. So we have that discussion and remove whatever that is going to be a stumbling block that come on that day of the outpouring. All of us will be soaked in Jesus' name. So the second one is penitential service. Now, after the personal contact, we're not going to listen to, um, to the priest, remind us again about the love and forgiveness of God. Then after that, we prepare ourselves and go and take away those our past life, past sin, and hand it over to God in confession. So that penitential service, after, after the penitential rite, which is about 30 minutes, there will be confession. So you are coming out as a new person. Praise God. So it is very important that you prepare. Prepare. I said something about quiet time. It is very important, please. Because it's in that your quiet time, God begins to open your eyes. And please, eh, I think the facilitators has, I don't see them. I've never seen any facilitator come during the week to say they are coming to see their participants. I don't know. Let me just reemphasize the importance of the facilitators. They are there to guide you. So any challenge you're having, if you are still having challenge, you've not experienced the love of the Father, you've not accepted Jesus as, uh, as your Savior, please, disturb your facilitator. Tell them, how did you get to this point? I'm reading my Bible, I'm not understanding it. I'm reading my quiet time, I'm not, I'm not understanding it. That is their work. They should be, uh, facilitators should be coming here within the week, trying to come and um, have sessions with you, bringing somebody else to come and talk to you. Please, don't go through this seminar and go back the same. What's the point? that you come here at 4 o'clock, you leave everything you're supposed to do, come here, and you go back the same. May that not be a portion in Jesus' name. Please, utilize your facilitators. Tell them your challenges. 
I'm struggling with this, I'm struggling with that. That is why they are there. And please don't look at your facilitator. I think I'm older than this person. When God calls somebody for work, God empowers the person. So for the fact that the person has accepted to do this work, there is a grace on the person's life. It's not about the person. It's about you. God is so interested that you have come for this seminar. So please utilize your facilitators. Tell them your challenges. Discuss with them and let them help you so that you get the whole benefit of this seminar. Praise God. So please, let's prepare for our personal contact and the penitential service. The personal, everything is going to happen April 6th. More information will be passed on it. So a quick recap. Remember, the knowledge that Jesus is the Lord of your life is not enough to make him the Lord of your life. It is until you allow him and hand over the keys and the wheels of your life, then he becomes the Lord of your life. Then Jesus is not the Lord of your life until he's the Lord of all, every aspect. So you don't give one and leave the other one. Of course, there will be struggles, but do, no problem. With those struggles, just keep submitting yourself to, to God and you keep renewing you and with time, you find out that all those struggles are no more. Then, be of good cheer. God has overcome the world. Challenges will be there, but he who has called you is faithful to bring you out from any challenge. Let us bow our heads and meditate on the word we have heard. I want you to respond to God. Today he's calling you, said, give me those keys. I stand at the door of your heart and I'm knocking. Say, give me. When I carry you, I will carry you safely. I know the navigations. There's a name they call him in Hebrew, Esoru Amaruzo. If you follow him, you can never miss the way. They also say, follow who no road. He knows it. So he's asking you, give me those keys. So respond to him. Make your commitments to him. Don't worry about the struggle. He will help you through it. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in today, come in and stay. to say this prayer. Say after me. Lord Jesus, I invite you again into my life. Come and be the Lord. I hand over the keys and the wheels to you. I surrender my will to you. And I open up my heart to your Holy Spirit. Give me a heart that yearns for you and ears that hear you and follow your leading. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. I surrender I surrender I surrender I surrender, I surrender. I surrender. 